Hello everyone, my name is Otavio and this is the Galilean Library and today I'm here with a very exciting video. I have four fantastic Brazilian classics to recommend to you guys. And originally I had five, but I decided to streamline it a little bit and just showcase for if this video is interesting and if you guys want to see more, maybe I would do more of these in the future. Or maybe talk about specific authors that are famous in Brazil or that have very strong, very influential works published in the country. During my time in high school, my required reading list was very different from the, the books that I've seen um, here in the US, from the classics in the English world. So for that reason, I think it's very interesting to have a video like this, recommending books that I really, really love that um, maybe you haven't heard about because they're completely different and they're from a completely different culture. And I have chosen books that are translated into English because otherwise, what would be the point? But yeah, I really, really do love these books. And yes, let's get started. First, I have Don Casmurro by Machado de Assis, first published in 1899. This classic focuses on two main characters, Bento and Capitu. Bento is the narrator of the book, and they have both known each other for many, many years, and they finally marry and have a child together. Bento, however, develops this very, very strong feeling that his son is not actually his son, and that Capitu has cheated on him with his best friend. So um, his narration is very suspicious and it's always on that theme of betrayal and on analyzing every single move that Capitu does and trying to decide if she has actually cheated on him or not. It relies on a first person narrative that you can't always trust and it gives a very ambiguous story. So you have many ways in which you can interpret this. And it's a fantastic, fantastic novel. It also has some very strong criticism of certain institutions in Brazil, both the institution of marriage and the institution of organized religion, specifically Catholic religion. And it's a very interesting novel in that way because being from 1899, it has some very, very forward criticism that you won't see very often until much later in the history of the country. And Machado de Assis was also very famous for being a big translator of Shakespeare's plays in Brazil. He has translated many of them and many of the Brazilian iterations of them in the theater have been uh, done because of his translations. And because of that, you can find many parallels of his works and Shakespeare's plays. And for Don Casmurro specifically, there is a big parallel with Othello, in which Capitu is sort of a Brazilian version of Desdemona. Next I have Barren Lives by Graciliano Ramos, and this was first published in 1938, and the original Portuguese title is Vida Secas. This tells the story of a very, very poor family in the Brazilian Northeast. The region is known as an arid, inhospitable place that bears many parallels in terms of human development, and even environment with uh, southern Africa. The family in question, comprised of the parents, two sons, and a dog, are faced with a drought. They have to move out of their home and roam the land, trying to find a new place to live, a new, pr a new place to survive. And these are not entirely likable characters. It has been said that the most human and the most sensible character in the book is the dog <laughs> and but even so you can't help but feel for them and understand their situation the novel is also written in a very cyclical way so technically you can actually finish the book read the last chapter and start it again and it would feel like the progression works so it, it is designed this way to describe how life in the Brazilian Northeast is that sort of a cycle of always having to leave uh, one's home and roam and trying to find a new one until a new drought comes along and it's a very very vicious cycle and it's very real. The original title in Portuguese also implies dryness, uh, vida secas. Secas means dry or devoid of water and while reading this book you really really do feel parched. It's gut-rending and it really does show a very accurate portrayal of life in this region. Next I have The Girl in the Photograph by Ligia Fagundes Telles, first published in 1973, and the original Portuguese title is As Meninas. 
The book follows three girls living in a Catholic boarding house. They are really, really good friends, but they're also very different in many ways. The book chronicles their experiences with very, very controversial things for the time, including drug addiction, sexual encounters, and even the development of what was considered radical thinking. This book was published during a very turbulent time in Brazil during the military dictatorship, and it was the height of this government, with censorship being very prevalent and extreme. And despite of that fact, it's also a very prevalent time in terms of development of culture and development of art. You would think that the majority of it would be censored, but the population and uh, specifically the artists creating um, material in Brazil during this time were aware of the censorship, but they were still trying to criticize this government in different ways. So during this time, you see a lot of works that criticize the government through metaphors that will bypass the people analyzing these books, these songs, or these pieces of art and deciding if they're going to be censored or not. And one of such works is this book by Ligia Fagundes Telles. So The Girl in the Photograph chronicles, on a more obvious side, the plight of women's emancipation and feminism in Brazil, which, as, uh, which was very prominent during this time, and at the same time it criticizes the government, but, but in a more metaphorical way, in a way that would bypass the censors. So this is really fantastic, the way that art and artists find a way to bypass these obstacles, you know, to make sure that their work is still true to what they think, and is still true to their opinions. So for this reason, I really, really love this book. There are many other books, many other works of art and culture from this specific time in Brazil that have this similar sort of structure, but this is one that really stands out for me for the fact that it also discusses women's rights in Brazil at the time. And last but not least, I have The Hour of the Star by Clarice Lispector that was published in 1975 and the original Portuguese title is A Hora da Estrela, which translates to this title, um, basically it means the same thing. In this short but super bittersweet story, we follow Macabea. She lives in the slums of Rio and is extremely poor and earns very, very little in her job. She loves movies, Coca-Cola, and her boyfriend, and she wants to be like Marilyn Monroe. The narrator of the story, her boyfriend, Rodrigo, he cannot understand how she's happy. How can she be happy? She's sick, poor, underfed, and has what most would see as a terrible existence. But yet she doesn't seem to know how unhappy she should be. And she is what the synopsis describes very well as inwardly free. And this is a very, very accurate description of her. She's a tremendous character and it's, she's one of my favorite characters of all time. And as a note, you should definitely read the author's note in this book. In any version that you can find, there will be an author's note, and it will be translated if you're buying in English, of course, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's kooky, crazy, and I love it. It really defines the Spectre's writing very well. The Spectre is also the single most prominent Jewish writer from Brazil, with her family having immigrated at the onset of the First World War and from what is now Ukraine. And this is very interesting that part of my family on my father's side has immigrated to Brazil from very similar Jewish communities from Ukraine at the same time in the same circumstances. And she's also known for her groundbreaking writing style, specifically for Brazil at the time. And she has several novels that are virtually plotless, but discuss very philosophical and existential themes. She was frequently compared to Franz Kafka and Virginia Woolf as well in Brazil. This particular novel, which is one of my favorites of her, does have a plot. It's not a very thick plot. It is mostly character-based and it, 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 and theme-based in a way. It's not necessarily just about the characters, but it's more to prove a point and talk about a theme. And it's, it has a lot more plot than most of her novels, which all are really great. But if you really are a plot-focused person, 
Her novels are really not gonna be something you're gonna like, but I do love them. They are just really fantastic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recommendation video and I hope you guys pick some of these books up because they are really, really great. And I'm gonna put links down below to where you can find those books in the US and other English speaking countries through Amazon or Book Depository, I think. And yeah, they are really, really fantastic books. If you guys want me to do more um, of these recommendation videos for um, Brazilian novels specifically, let me know. I definitely can do them. And maybe I can do, like I said, an author-specific recommendation video because some of these authors have written many, many books that are absolutely fantastic. So it would be really great to talk about them as well. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see more, click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!